Imagine a future where every transaction you make, every cent you spend is monitored, tracked, and controlled by a single entity. There will be no fear mongering in this segment, but this dystopian reality could be a lot closer than you think with the introduction of FedNow, a new digital payment system that could give the federal government a direct line into your financial transactions, which could fundamentally impact all of our privacy and freedom. So what exactly is FedNow? Well, launching July 1st, 2023, pretty much as we speak, FedNow is a new instant payment system run by the Federal Reserve. It's designed to enable banks, credit unions, and other financial institutions to deliver end-to-end -end payment services to their customers 24-7, 365 days a year. They say the service will roll out in stages. The initial launch will include core clearing and settlement functionality, requests for payment capability, and tools to support reconciliation. Basically the processes that take place behind the scenes that you probably don't even think about at all with making sure that the money that is zipping around the country is being accounted for properly and no fraud is happening. Future phases will introduce additional capabilities that are more consumer facing, such as instantaneous peer-to-peer -peer account transfers and online bill pay. All good stuff, right? A much needed advancement in technology, some are saying. Today, when you, uh, for instance, deposit a check it takes three to 10 days for that check to clear the other bank. And that system is operating like the 1930s right now, and they're trying to move it into the digital world. In a digital world, that should take three to 10 seconds. Overall, this is good. Overall, this is good. So you might be thinking instant payments, don't we already have something like that? The answer is yes, we do. Back in November of 2017, the Clearinghouse introduced the first real-time payment service in the United States called the RTP network. And since its launch, the network has steadily grown. In Q3 of 2022, 45 million transactions for a total of close to $20 billion were processed through the RTP network. If you are a free market proponent, the introduction of FedNow to compete with RTP could be seen as a good thing, spurring innovation and price competition. That being said, while the clearinghouses RTP and FedNow are very similar in its capabilities and fee structure, there is one major difference, governance. Clearinghouses RTP is operated by a consortium of banks and FedNow is centrally controlled by one bank, the Federal Reserve Bank. This has raised some eyebrows among folks who are distrustful of centralized financial planning, one of them being Professor Richard Werner, an economist well known for his research on monetary policy, banking systems, and economic development. You know, the, the central bankers want to compete against banks. So we can't really trust them anymore to really take the benevolent you know, policies that are good for society and create stability. Um, maybe there's a different agenda. Hmm, interesting, what agenda might that be? Because on one hand, real-time transactions can be a boon for fraud prevention, like I previously mentioned. If something suspicious does occur, it can be identified and dealt with immediately. But on the flip side, this real-time logging of transactions means that a detailed record of your financial activity is being created and stored. Every purchase, every bill paid, every penny sent to a friend for that pizza last night, it's all logged in real time by a government-backed entity. To reiterate, FedNow is run by the Federal Reserve Bank, which in theory operates independently from the federal government, but it does maintain a close relationship with them. So it's not inconceivable that transaction data could be shared under certain circumstances. The question then becomes, under which circumstances might this data be shared? for criminal investigations, for tax purposes, economic analysis. These are all questions that we don't yet have answers to. In the past few years, the Chinese government has trialed similar technologies in an attempt to expand its surveillance state. Cosmetics, groceries, a new phone, a year's worth of laundry detergent. Citizens of the Chinese city of Suzhou entered an official lottery to win up to 200 yuan or roughly $30 from the government in order to spend it in any way they liked. But the money that the people won was not physical cash. It was digital yuan. China is actually already pretty advanced in this regard in that many people 
hardly use cash at all in their daily lives. They mostly pay for things through Alipay, which is owned by Ant Group, or uh, under WeChat Pay, which is owned by Tencent. Our understanding is that what the People's Bank of China wants to do is quite similar, except that it wouldn't happen necessarily through, through Alipay or through WeChat Pay. It would happen through um, a separate app that the PBOC has created that would allow people to pay that way. On a micro scale, and this is something that many in the West would probably not be comfortable with, and many in China, frankly, would not be comfortable with, is that it would allow authorities to be able to track precisely how you or my neighbor or the person down the street is spending the money. Are they spending the money on buying things they shouldn't be buying? Whatever, however you define that. Are they are they gambling with their money? Are they doing this or that with their money? Sound dystopian? Well, this can become a reality with a centrally run system like FedNow. For the record, Fed officials and banking experts say the new FedNow service does not give the agency additional surveillance and enforcement authorities. Quote, while there are many sound concerns around FedNow being an unnecessary expansion of the Federal Reserve's footprint, I do not share that same concern that FedNow will expand surveillance. I don't know, would you expect them to say anything different? Let me know what you think. But a closer look at FedNow's published privacy policy reveals that the terms that have been laid out are very vague, perhaps by design. Similar to private networks, FedNow is, quote, authorized to collect and use your personal information for a variety of purposes, one of them being to comply with legal requirements. But if the Fed is buddy-buddy with the folks who make the law, you could see why some people are getting concerned. So the central bank, which is the bank regulator, used to be a, an umpire, is suddenly stepping into the arena, into the into the game, is participating, is competing against the banks. That's an extraordinary development. You see, as with many cases relating to centralized expansion of power, they claim to not have such an authority until all of a sudden they do. Another important point, typically when it comes to private digital payment systems, you have the power to choose which platform you want to use or not use any of them at all. But with FedNow, the choice isn't entirely in your hands. In the first phase, it's up to the banking institutions whether or not they decide to implement FedNow. If your bank decides to use FedNow, your transactions will be processed through this system, whether you're comfortable with it or not. So yes, while the Fed continues to assure and reassure us that there is quote unquote nothing nefarious about FedNow, it would also behoove us to pay attention to what else they've been cooking in the oven. Could FedNow be just a precursor to something even bigger? As presidential candidate Robert F. Kennedy Jr. astutely observed, could FedNow be just a stepping stone, a first step towards the implementation of a U.S. central bank digital currency? What is a central bank digital currency and how would an introduction of such a digital currency impact our financial privacy and our ability to control our own money? Well, you can find out in part two of this deep dive into FedNow hosted on my channel 5149 with James Lee, where we're going to tackle these questions head on. So join me by clicking on the link below. But before you do so, don't forget, like this video so more people see it and also subscribe to Breaking Points if you haven't done so yet. Thank you for your time today, and I hope to see you in the next video.